Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. I know it's not Sunday. We had a real busy weekend. Put in about 16 hours on Saturday and about the same on Sunday trying to get some of the, the things in place for uh, expanding. Anyway, we're just going to do our What Sold on Sunday video today, Monday, and we're going to head on over there to the screen right now. So here we go. This is the first item here. This is a 1976 Star Trek Dynabrite story. Uh, that's literally the story article that happens in here. I didn't look through it very closely. Um, I don't look at most items, even if I'm interested. I'm just FYI, just because of time. Um, sometimes I may if it's something really interesting. This is just a typical comic book. Uh, it doesn't show up very often, but it's not very uh, scarce, so they don't go for a ton of money, in all honesty. I sold it for 10 bucks. I paid a dollar. I made 8 so. Uh, uniform button. I have maybe five cents into this when it was bought off of a card. I bought the whole card for $2. I sold probably 12 or so buttons already off that card for at least 10 bucks. This one did go for $17.50. Uh, it's an 1870s, 1880s U.S. Marine Corps um, button. It's a legit piece, nice one, horseman back mark. Next one here is a newer postcard. And I'll show you the back so you can see. I don't remember the date. 1991, mind you. 1991, I got 1750 from this one here. It's a specific place. They sent out probably a minuscule amount of advertisements, so there might have been a couple hundred of these made. Maybe not even that. Who knows? It was probably just made to send out to like their client list uh, that they had. So with that, there's just not a lot of these available, I would say. So $17.50. I didn't take any offer on it whatsoever. It literally sold for $17.50. Let's see. Next one here, another postcard. This one I had up for $19.99. I ended up selling it for $14.50. You can look up at comps. It's not a huge high dollar card. It's got a bad glare on the left side, as you can see. Nothing wrong with the card. It's just a, a glare on there. There was a little ripple in the card. So it's an interesting uh, real picture or real photo postcard. Um, but the place is still there, if I'm not mistaken, as well, too. So $14.50, as I said. Here's an ET bracelet. These go for about $14, $15 on average in the package. I got twelve fifty for it out. You know, it just depends on the day of the week, I guess. It's an original 80s one. Um, the wife takes great pictures of the jewelry here. Sometimes the glare, like on this one here, it makes it a little difficult to see. It's got just an awesome gilt tint to it. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Next one here is a tobacco card. Now, in tobacco cards, we ran a big push on tobacco items. I got a bunch more in. I want to kind of thin out some of the older stock, um, bring some more people into the store who are looking for this material. So we'll be scattering new ones out. But in the meantime, we're actually discounted a whole bunch of items. And some didn't, didn't sell discounted-wise, but were actually bought by people who bought the discounted items. So they'll see the discounted item. They'll buy the discounted item. They'll see other items in the store which are recommended to them before they finally check out. And that's where I make some sales on these type of items too. Fourteen fifty. This one sold for. Um, and you can see it's just a small tobacco card. You'll see staining on the tobacco cards because literally they were in with the tobacco, and in many times it was actually moist, and it actually stained the cards in some some cases. Next one here. Now this one sold because it's a young boy smoking, and he's got a baseball bat in him. He's playing ball. So this is just a typical example. I took $28.50 out of this one here, um, and they paid postage. Just as everybody pays postage on my items. Real photo postcard. Uh, this is another one of those. I took an offer, $28.50 on this one. It's about half what my list price is. Again, I mark up. And on this one here, there's no real way to tell you know, what the value is. These type don't show up super often, but there's a ton of different ones of them. So who knows what the, the specific value. I price high, I leave it up for a few months. Um, I usually get offers on the better ones. And if they don't get an offer for a while, it's not a good card, honestly. Even if it's high dollar priced and it's well above the market, if somebody thinks it's a good card, it's going to get an offer, even if it's a low ball one. This one has some pottery in it, which is really interesting. I'm happy with the price. These run from, say, 8 to, say, 30 bucks or so on average for most of these, any given one from a Pueblo um, in New Mexico. I've seen them. I've had them. They sell. You can look up comps as well, too, if you'd like. Again, and anything I'm showing you out here, most of these you can see in comp uh, sales listings. Some of my items that are uh, ended you won't see just because I do um, quantity out, and then sometimes we delete them just for uh, our competitors' issues and things along that line. 
Uh, here's some die cuts of Santa. Now, I had some partial sheets I purchased at an auction. I separated them into a nice mixed lot. These are bought by crafters who recreate things. I've talked about that in my Patreon video, um, you know, showing you some of these aspects on it here, too. So this was purchased by someone who's bought many items from me just for the same uh, thing. They do crafts and things for, for the season. They'll do Christmas items with these. That would be a mix of original items mixed with a, you know, recreation of some Victorian uh, decorations and things. Now, here's a cigar box label. This is an outside one. The small ones on a tobacco cigar box are the outer labels. The big labels are the ones that were inside the box because the box would be opened on a counter. So you'd see that over just the little uh, aspect of it. Plus, you'd be able to smell the aroma and such forth from it too. So I sold this one for 10 bucks. I had a bunch of these that are bought at an auction, a big bulk lot. I spent hundreds on them, but I bought hundreds of labels. So, you know, you spend some money to make some money. And I sold probably... 20 or 30 labels at least 10 bucks a piece just like this just through this week that's just with the labels though so we sold a ton of them i think i brought a few in here yeah here's another label uh same person didn't buy all of these we just sold a bunch because we were pushing to get some of these out life preserver this one's pretty interesting um loss and stuff uh, um in that era are very popular topics so these almost always seem to sell fairly well 10 bucks i'm fine again i got pennies into these Again, next one here is a lot of tobacco cards. It's Yum Yum Tobacco. Uh, they're actually trimmed on the bottom, it looks like. They were probably printed off center on top of being trimmed. So, And it literally says that. I've got some decent pictures here. So um, I took $14.50 on them because they were trimmed. Yum Yum isn't a big, well-collected brand. They don't show up very often, but again, they're damaged. They've got some issues with them. They've got overstamping from another company. Um, not the best examples of them, honestly. Now, this is a Standard Oil Company employee magazine for Ohio. This is Ohioan. This is from 1940. Now, I picked up maybe 60 or 70 of these. I think I spent like 25 bucks on the whole lot. It's been a while since I bought them. I listed them all right off the bat. I sold like four or five the first day for top dollar in the 34 to say 57 range. All the Christmas, holiday, and Halloween ones sold really quickly. And then we've been selling a couple of months ever since then. So I took 10 bucks. I'm fine. I'll blow the rest out. We've already made hundreds of dollars, four or 500 off this lot of magazines just because of the, the, the low amount we paid for them to begin with. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Now, this is a seamstress, tailor point, presser, and pounding block. I don't know anything about this. Um, I have no idea what would it be used for other than what it says, you know, pressing, um, you know, probably pants or something. Who knows? It's all there. The box had some issues. I've had this up for a long time. I just blew it out for 10 bucks. This is one of those items that I'll use for my uh, free listings, my auctions, and I just auctioned it off 10 bucks. If it went for more, oh well. If it didn't, oh well too. Um, I paid a dollar for it, just as you see it. So even with that and listing fees, I still took home seven bucks profit. Not a huge profit. Only took a few minutes to photograph in the whole works. So now here is a Christmas card from Japan. Again, this is something that's been up for a while. I don't use anything like this for my background. It has some issues with the card. I probably have a dollar twenty into listing it. I have maybe fifty cents into purchasing it. So I've got about two dollars into the card. I sold it for ten, taken home about eight dollars. They paid for shipping, so I have nothing whatsoever out in shipping either. So Next one's an 8x10. I sold a couple of these to the same person. I took 10 on this one here. It's been up for a little while. It's not as popular as the military-specific like vehicles and things. I picked up a whole bunch of these for like 10 or 15 bucks at a sale. I've got almost nothing into it, so you know I'm still making probably about $8 or so again uh, profit. That's not my average, but that just happens to be what these are. Next one here is a vintage Cameo. I sold it for $14.50. Um, I paid like 50 cents or a quarter for this in a bag lot. It's been up for a little while, no big deal on it, so I'm still making like 12 bucks on this piece here. Next one's an American Cinematographer magazine. It's Jim Henson's The Muppets. It actually shows and talks about the making of the movie, if you haven't seen the magazine. Um, the gloss on it made it kind of hard to photograph. You can see a reflection, unfortunately. I did sell for 10 bucks again. Again, I paid like a dollar or less for most magazine. That's my average purchase on most of these. I purchased a whole bunch of these. Some of them went for 30, 40 bucks. Some issues with better topics like Blade Runner or Star Wars will always sell higher. Um, and some issues of this magazine can sell into the hundreds on some 
some cases. So I just blew out the cheaper ones. I already sold the expensive ones, got my money back, made a profit, and then we're just whittling away at the rest of them. Uh, next one's a piece of sheet music here. Now, I price this at what a top dollar, high quality version of the sheet music would go for. Sometimes I sell it for that price. Sometimes I don't. This one I took 10 because there's a corner missing across it. So um, it's the Billy Rose Aquacade. It was at um, the actual Great Lakes Expo. It was basically like a water show. So there's other items from it. Uh, you'll find the Billy Rose's um, Aquacade at other events as well, too. So 10 bucks on this one, I'm fine. Next one I sold for twelve fifty. It's just a little sticker, and I bought it with some political uh, collectibles. Um, I think it was an auction, maybe. No, no, I think maybe an estate sale, honestly. Uh, and I, again, I sold it for twelve fifty. The same person has bought maybe forty different things for me in the past. Maybe more than that. It's hard to keep track sometimes. Next one's a Jazz seventy eight. Ain't misbehaving. You should know the song. This one I found in a French LP set. It was one of the few items that was left by most people. Um, I'm assuming they just figured that it was all in French, but there was two songs that weren't, and both of those discs sold for 15 bucks. So, you know, I'm fine with that. Next one's a group of comic books. I pay a dollar usually or less for comic books. At the most, I have six bucks into these six comic books. Um, I sold it for twenty-four fifty, basically. So, you know, it's a good profit on these. Uh, some are wins, some are not. You know, I usually am able to make three or four times my investment on any comic book that I buy overall. I may have to put them in a lot and sell them that way to get a few more dollars for them. I'll mix in like a higher dollar uh, issue with some of the cheaper ones, and it usually helps elevate the comics. So, decent profit on that one. Next one's a luggage label from Hotel Cosmopolitan. I do not remember where I got this from. It did sell for twelve fifty. I can't imagine I have more than a dollar at the very most into this at all. So good return on that one either way. Now here is a musical barware jug, and it, it played or was supposed to play How Dry I Am. But when I first got it, it didn't work. I paid a dollar for it. Now, a lot of these have the same style of music box. It's the mechanism that makes the box go that isn't the same in most of them. And I've got a big box. And I've shown some in a haul. I bought probably 50 or 60 music boxes um, on a couple of occasions, and I saved those. But I took this apart with the screws there. I sprayed some WD-40 on the actual music box. I shook it out, let it dry out, let all the drips go bye-bye. And it actually works again. It worked fine. I tested it many, many times over. It's fine. It just got tied up from either old grease or something like that. But a real good spray of it uh, carefully. You remove it from the wood, actually, of course. There's bolts that hold it in there. You can see the two screws will take it off the bottle. The two bolts will take it off the actual piece of wood that everything's mounted to. So easy one on that one. So for my dollar, I sold for $17.99. I made about a $14 profit on it. Spent about four minutes or less to fix it. I've got a bin of stuff. Everything's right here handy. I've got a toolbox just for eBay and fixing and doing stuff for whatever site I'm listing on. I've got a bin with a drip proof tray for all kinds of chemicals or things like that that would um, help fix items. Mostly just lubricants and cleaners and de, de goo be gone and things along that line. Uh, next one's a print ad, $9.99. Just some random print ad. It's from the 1870s. I believe this came from a book that was actually chopped up by us, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes you can find some of these in books. I could blow out a lot of these if I just wanted to throw them up for a few dollars, but I'd rather sell less for a higher dollar than sell more cheaper. It's, it's less work anyway, and I still make the same amount of money, if not much more this way, so... Uh, next one's a Sterling and Graduated Pearls. Now, these do look like actual pearls. It did sell for $37.50 on this one. The clasp is Sterling, and it's on a string, the pearls. They look like they're actual pearls. They're a regular shape, and the whole works. Pearls overall aren't worth a lot of money, especially older vintage ones, unless they're like real high dollar, nice, perfect rounds or a beautiful color overall. I've got several strands more up right now. I've got some new ones, old ones. Even the new ones don't sell very high unless it's just a Primo brand or say a Tiffany or something. So I'm fine with that. I've got a dollar or two into this at the most. Uh, the person I bought it from didn't even realize it was sterling, so... And the last one here is a tobacco silk. I've shown a bunch of these. We sell a couple a week on these um, some weeks. Other weeks, I may only sell one or two, but I sold this one for 75 I price high on these. 
who knows where it would go. It's not graded or slabbed. So, you know, I'd rather just shell it out and blow it out that way than pay the money to have all these graded and slabbed and then still worry about selling them. Let somebody else deal with that. Um, I'm fine with that. Even if I don't make quite as much money, it's just less work and less hassle for me to keep track of all the stuff coming and going. We do send some stuff off, but this just wasn't one of them. So we've made a ton of money on this lot of these uh, that I got, though. I still have a big bag of ones of these silks that I haven't even listed yet. So we'll get around to them once I cleared some more of these offline. So anyway, that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.